Welcome everyone. This is really our last update webinar for 2022. I just thought about that a little bit ago and thought, oh my gosh, it's uh, it's that time. The next one we have will be in 2023. Can you believe it? So Matthew, tell us what's new on your side of the house. Okay, and I've got quite a few things to go through, but um, I do want to apologize. I was a day late in uh, in releasing 116. Um, it came out yesterday afternoon, so I apologize if people were waiting for it in high anticipation. But uh, last week during my training in Alabama, I found quite a few bugs, or we ran into quite a few bugs uh, in the training. So thought I'd fix those before releasing. So, uh, but we're going to talk about features and first off, well, kind of second off now, uh, want to promote Cheryl's awesome work. Uh, she has been, uh, this was a couple months ago. She worked really hard in converting all of the email templates in the demo to use the new style, the pound pound style, which came out uh, a little over a year ago. So uh, those are in the demo, but you can also download them off of our website if you are wanting to replace your templates uh, with the new modern style and and start with those in uh, instead of the older style templates. So yay, Cheryl. Uh, features. Uh, one of the things we've noticed with Archive is if you try to clone a course from Archive, it doesn't save. It, it actually takes you to a blank course screen. Um, this is due to the nature of the Archive in that it uh, doesn't have the save capabilities there anyway, and they are, you know, separate tables, you know, separate separate sections of the database when you're talking archive and live data. So just uh, disabled the clone button on, on courses uh, when you're in the archive. Uh, cell phone. People call cell phones? What? Uh, cell phone on the student callback. Uh, this was just added, or this was added a couple months ago in the 114 release. Um, so yeah, that way you can you can contact people via that instead of home phone or day phone. So tracking, so we've got a couple more tracking fields uh, and we're adding them in student manager. And, and part of that is the, the way ACEWeb and, and student manager interact, adding the field from Student manager, even though this is primarily an ACE web use one, uh, is just more cohesive to the update schedule. ACE web is set if you update to 71 before you update to uh, uh, or update student manager, it's set to um, if you don't have the new field uh, to, to not put in it, but it will start populating. When an admin logs in on ACEWeb into one of those admin page areas. Similarly, with Manager Web, we've got a separate field going for that so that you can um, see when the last time somebody logs into that feature. And then, oh, well, I guess I'll talk about it later. But um, keep that in mind. I thought I'd reordered my slides, but yeah, keep that in mind with the the, the two fields. But uh, catch all, uh, I finally have just gotten frustrated enough with blank registrations and blank reg UDF field or uh, records, like it's just blank and they just need removed. Uh, normally running the orphan routine would find those and and clean those up for you. You know, try to put in to a placeholder, a placeholder name record um, or a uh, course. Um, just just making up a course form. Um, that though, yeah. 
the, these were coming up way too much and they're always bogus. So might as well just kill them. Um, if you do, for whatever reason, want to make sure that they are, you know, there's nothing's getting killed that shouldn't be killed, run the orphan routine before you run the catch all, catch all, but um, better just to go ahead and run the catch all. Um, ran into, had somebody this morning that uh, uh, had this issue going on, had someone yesterday afternoon. So this is, uh, uh, yeah, this was released a couple months ago, and yeah, it's already starting to help some people. Um, so yeah, really, let's get rid of them. Don't know how they're coming in anyway, but um, yeah, we'll we'll keep trying to track down where they come from. But for now, we can just kill them. Uh, email roster to instructors. Uh, we had it, well, we now have it so that you can do the pound pounds and the templates, uh, which is another good thing that Cheryl has been doing those conversions for for at least the default templates um, is we can now be able to utilize that in, in one more area. Uh, refund to proxy note, the refund to proxy came out quite a while ago. Uh, or not quite a while, like June. Um, but people were noticing that, hey, we'd like a note letting us know that that uh, refund has gone somewhere else. So yeah, added the little note, registered, re uh, well, the registered online was already there, but payment refunded to proxy and then gives the name of the proxy person. Um, so that, that you can uh, track that down a little bit more. Uh, new field, and we're calling it PY original. Uh, so this is more, this is, this is exclusively for reporting. It's not going to show um, on any screens, or at least for now, it's not showing on any screens. It's, um, we're, we're using it to keep track of uh, what the original payment, well, what student, what course the payment was originally uh, paid to. That way, in between transfers and, and other such things, that information isn't changing. And so you can kind of keep a track of, of um, you know, where, where the payment originally came in from and then um, you know, you won't be able to track all the movements, you know, if you're doing multiple transfers, especially transfer to escrow at, and then escrow back into another registration. But at least it gives you where it came from originally and then, you know, where it currently is. So uh, catalog, uh, importing catalog and emails. This is something Cheryl was noticing with, well, with her new stuff. Um, when you try to import, if there was the same code already in place, so like E underscore mail was already in the system, and the the what you were importing had E underscore mail, uh, then they would there would be two of them in the system. So added a duplicate checker to uh, to make sure there weren't duplicates. Uh, report added to the report menu a link that goes out to the report area guide in in help. Uh, this way you can, if you are stuck trying to figure out where's the best place to run a particular report or, or get you the report information you need, go to the report area guide and that that helps you um, figure out uh, hopefully, we'll at least narrow down the suspects of the the areas of of where you need to run to to get something going. Uh, reverse sort on courses taught, student list, um, uh, other things. Uh, mainly with courses taught is what people were were noticing. You can sort by a column but it wasn't doing any reverse sorting until the 115 update. So this is, if you hit the header twice, 
then it does a rever reverse sort. So exactly like on any of the search screens that are in Student Manager now with uh, being able to sort the, the, you know, by clicking on the header and then doing a second click to reverse sort. Uh, code cleanup added the family type to the, the codes. Um, probably just an oversight why that never was added before. But um, yeah, thought uh, somebody was looking for that. So added, added that for them. Uh, while I was in there, well, not really while, it was like this was a multi-day process, but um, uh, since it was fresh in my mind, doing a catalog code cleanup. So this would allow you to delete or deactivate old catalog codes. Um, the, doing a replace does not combine the two catalog records like it does on any of the other co codes, but it does um, any of the courses that have the replaced catalog code uh, get updated to the new catalog code. So it does help you a little bit there in, in trying to clean those up if you are um, needing to do that. And then also while I was there, it's like, why don't we have, you know, like on, on the codes area, it's got um, where you could see the names, you could see the courses, see the registration that this code is being used on. Um, I was like, well, why don't we just have one button to rule them all, call it usage. You could click on that on the different codes and it'll show you from the code cleanup uh, what, what it's being used for. Um, so you're, you know, if you're going through your codes and being like, is this code even used on, on a course, like, you know, like a subject code or something? Is this subject code used on a course anywhere? Uh, click the usage button and, and you can see just how much you're using it or not. Uh, staff chooser. I've, I've already heard from some of you that uh, have uh, updated to 115 uh, last month and, and are loving this. Uh, all sorts of uh, the um, uh, email screens I've added this to, and it's really next to the um, uh, also send a copy uh, um, you know it, it, you could put in an email address of who you're wanting to copy. But if it's somebody that's in student manager, you know one of the student manager logins, I've added a drop down list next to that to where you can just go down. Uh, I want to copy Sharon, and that way just have to pick Sharon's name and it pops the email address into the also send uh, box. So hopefully saves you a little bit of trouble of trying to have to remember, although here at Aceware, Sharon at Aceware.com is pretty easy to remember, but some of you guys have weird email addresses at your institution. So, okay, this next one, I have been wanting to do this forever. And I finally just, just set aside a day or two to actually do this. And, and it was that additional info button would pop open a different screen with the pay note, um, the transaction number, transaction ID, that sort of stuff. It's like, why do we have this extra screen? Everywhere else in the system, uh, names, courses, registrations, the additional info is a separate tab. So that's what I put in on the pay screen is on the main tab is your, you know, most of the fields you're normally seeing on the pay screen uh, minus the UDFs. The UDFs I went ahead and um, flipped over onto the additional info tab. Partly because it, hey, there's more room over there. Um, save, saves a little bit there uh, in between the two sections then, or the two tabs on the, the screen. Um, but yeah, well, and plus then it matches then everywhere else where the UDFs are on the additional info tab. So uh, I created the new tab. Uh, Cheryl tested the heck out of that and, and, um, 
yeah um we're able to i think get everything fixed and and out the door with 115 uh at least i haven't heard anybody uh running into any issues due to the the moving of the fields but and, and that, um, when i say issues i mean like bugs due to it um because yeah there were there were many changes that i had to do behind the scenes in the code to to get this working right but got it i think we got it anyway and uh yeah, I hope it helps everybody out. Allow, disallow, wait list. So this is on the mass change uh, or mass update change delete archive uh, area. And um, uh, somebody asked, why don't we have the allow wait list or disallow wait list uh, right from that area so that they can change all their courses in mass? Um, and yeah, I was like, I don't know. Let's do it. So added a new drop down to that area and uh, you can now use that. Then that came out last month in, in the 115 release. So uh, another, I think this one's another big deal. Um, in 115, it, we've had the email link to pay outstanding on, on the name record and been doing a lot of enhancements to that. Well, basically I've copied that over into the registration screen for you to, to, to email out for an entire group. So you got, um, you know, Aceware Systems is sending Joe, Jason, Lindsay to a conference, um, but by golly, we haven't collected the money yet. You can email to the proxy, reg proxy registrant or, or you know, whoever has proxy registered these registrations, it, it automatically goes to that. If there is no proxy set, then um, it's the, the uh, person that you're on. So if you're on, uh, you know, of that example, Lindsay's record, and you email the link to the group balance, it goes to Lindsay. It doesn't go to everybody in the group, it just goes to one person. So make sure you're sending it to the person that uh, gets the bills. So with that, being able to assign the proxy to an entire group um, was, can't remember who thought of that. I think it was Cheryl's idea. Um, so we've had that button to assign proxy but that's just to the single registration. Well, now if it's on a group, assign the proxy, it asks if you want to assign to everybody in the group. And that way it doesn't matter whose registration you're on, you click that email link to, to group outstanding and it goes to that proxy registration. So uh, kind of helps. Yeah, well, if you've got 20 people in the, or 20 registrations in a group going through each and every one of those individually just to assign the proxy, yeah, that's a little bit more work. So, um, yeah, this uh, should help you there in getting that all taken care of. And of course, with AceWeb, it automatically puts that proxy person in those registrations. So, no worry on those. In, in doing that, but it's just the student manage, if you're putting together the registrations groups in, uh, in from student manager, that's where it comes into play. All right, so this is what I kind of alluded to earlier that uh, uh, we've added the AceWeb log, uh, last login field, the manager web last login field, and we've had last login for, for when you sign in the student manager, that's been in the system forever. It, you'd only see it when you do um, uh, show users, you know, control you and see who's in the system. It would show on there uh, when the date they last logged in the student manager. So if you see that they've logged in a year ago, it's like, um, yeah, we need to kick them out. Uh, of course, student manager doesn't have the ability to kick them out, but at least you know that this is a, a person that uh, has been in there for a very long time and not logged out. So, or maybe they have been logged out. They're just, um, uh, it's just they haven't 
been in student manager in a year. So maybe they don't need their login anymore. Anyway, so this is now on the password maintenance screen in the bottom right hand corner, um, just below all the, the levels, uh, it shows these three last login fields. Of course, the ACE web and the manager web last login won't start populating until you um, update your to ACE web 71. But um, but yeah, it 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 will start populating once uh, you get some of those going. Package course cloning. This I think is another BFD. Let me get to my demo somewhere. Demo. Hey. All right. So if I look up my package course, um, twenty-three. It looks like I haven't done any of the S's. You can tell I've been practicing this uh, a little bit. So if I clone, so first of all, so I've got a package course. It's got three uh, children courses in the package. If I clone the course, Alt F1 to bring in, and let's do 23S. Shouldn't have any of these courses going. Say OK. Comes up and tells you. You've cloned a package course, any child courses that didn't exist have been created. That's the new part of this. Not only is it cloning over your, your main package course, but any of the children courses that don't exist, they're also getting created at the same time. But the begin dates haven't been set. So make sure you go into the package and set those. So here's the main package needs the begin date set. Um, if I save this without putting a date. So here's the other courses that have been added. Double click, right click to open the course. Notice it doesn't have a date either. I need to set that, abandon that, right click the next one, same thing. So each of the courses, so it's really, the, it's cloned four courses in a split second. Well, it took me longer to read that box than a split second. But anyway, it cloned four courses for the price of one. Um, so I think that's going to help you guys out with uh, your package courses uh, if you are utilizing that uh, feature. And that is a module that you would need to purchase if you don't have it, um, which I think it's, it's another great way to offer your courses. You know, if you are um, you know, trying to get yeah some way to discount for courses it's a great way to do that or if, you know if you got these uh certifications where it's all of these different courses they need to take bundle them all together into one package it's it's a great way to do that ad hoc dates so this is where you've got a schedule that does not conform to the regular you know Tuesday, Thursday of every week. Maybe it's the first Monday of the month that um, that uh, the course meets on. I had a customer, it was Monday through Friday every week, but it was every other Saturday. Um, so, and then of course you get some instructors that go on these whims of, oh, today I feel like, or this week I feel like, teaching Monday, Thursday, Friday, next week, it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, getting all weird and ad hoc -y. So uh, with Student Manager 116, we can do that. And since I'm here on this package course, I'll, I'll do it right here. Uh, so this new button right next in between the sessions, you can set the begin date of the course before you go to ad hoc dates, and then it'll show uh, dates starting from there, or it'll just start this week and, and go on. So if I do want the first Monday and I'm showing, so the date, the day of the week, and then a week number. So this is in, in that particular month, what week does it fall on? 
So if I want that example of first Monday of every month, well, let's go down here to November. Uh, oops, went a little too far. Wait, first Monday. So here's week one, the first Monday of November is November 7th. Come down here, December, the first Monday in December is right here. Uh, go down here, January, first Monday is the second. So we got three dates going here. It shows you a tally of as you're going through the list, hit done. It's put in my first Monday to the last Monday. If I go to room use, okay, yes, sure. It shows me those three Mondays that it's falling on. Uh, notice that the the Monday is not getting checked. None of the days of the week are getting checked here because it's not following that weekly schedule. So this is one difference you're going to see in in courses. Um, okay, close is fine, but um, but yeah, you can set your ad hoc dates. I would recommend before you hit ad hoc dates is to make sure you set the start time and end time. Uh, first, because if you notice my room use, it automatically put in the that from the the course. Um, so have that set first before you do it. I didn't care because I'm just showing off dates. I'm not showing off times. Um, but yeah, set that first, and it'll it'll carry that into the uh, individual dates for the the course. All right, next. Questions. What questions do we have, Sharon? We have a question from Kathy. And Kathy, you might have to, you should be um, unmuted so that you can tell Matthew where he was when you popped this question in. Something about not, about combining records that have the same class. Some students are making a mistake in opening three or four records and never complete the registration and you were looking for solutions. Kathy, you might have to jump in and uh, kind of tell us where Matthew was if you asked this question. Anybody there? <laughs> I might have to follow up with Kathy after we go off line. Yeah, Other questions? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where you were in the new goodies when this question was asked, so I may have to follow up with with Kathy. Um, other questions while Matthew is here about the new goodies or questions in general. Okay, Matthew, if you can stop sharing, I'll bring up ACEWEB uh, changes here and get my screen shared. Oh, there's stop share. Okay, you should have it. All right. Give me a second. All the buttons, all the buttons to push here. You are seeing me now, yes? Yep, 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 thank you. Okay. Some of these features that I'm going to share are kind of an extension of what Matthew has already shared. So except this one, this deadbeat function on AceWeb, this logging the date when a staff uh, signs in to manager web or AceWeb administration, and then support for that group payment online that Matthew shared earlier. So this deadbeat function, you are used to seeing when a student has a balance due or even a credit balance on their student manager record. But now you can also see that on AceWeb. In this instance that you see here, this is a staff member logged into manager web and can see that balance due and can also, you know, send email and things like that straight from manager web. So that's new. And we're repeating here. You can put this on various ACE web pages. You just saw uh, what it looked like when a staff member is logged in. And this is an example of Mr. Havlicek who has a balance due and he also has 
um, escrow credit on his account. So this is new when they log into their accounts that they can see that online and so can staff when they log into Manager Web. There's support for group payment online. Matthew talked about that email that's on the registration record to send to the proxy to pay their balance due for those that they have registered. This is an example here of what that email is going to look like. Ms. Cheryl has gone in and she has registered herself and a few others for a specific course. And she can click on this link and when that happens, then she's directed to her account, her AceWeb account login. And she can see the payment status and all of those that she's registered are checked and she is ready to pay that balance. So this is just kind of what it looks like on the other side of student manager for the student or the proxy that has um, registered these students. This is the other new thing that Matthew talked about. This is in the password maintenance area in Student Manager. You've always, as Matthew mentioned, the last login into Student Manager has been here for, for all time, I suppose, or a very long time. But now you can see the last time that Ms. Cheryl logged into ACE Web Administration or logged into Manager Web. So those are the new things there. What I did miss, and I saw that Ms. Ashley is a course package user, and I did not get this on the list. And so I want to go to um, a package course here and Cheryl you may have to chime in because this I, I missed at the very last minute this is package two now shows all the child packages within the course Cheryl anything to add to that that I've overlooked that mute unmute is important did you share your screen because we don't see what you don't see it okay no we just well thank you very much now yeah, you should be yeah. seeing it in this. No, go back one. What? Go back one. Go back one. Yeah. Okay. See the second, the project management package, and then the fee. Prior to 071, it would just show zero there because there's no fees associated with the actual package course. But we added a way to add it, so now you you'll see the um, the amount for the whole package. All this, I think this one has three courses in it, so you'll see that all three of them together are five hundred twenty-five dollars. This is another view of that there. So I'm sorry I missed that on the slide, and um, I missed that because I came over to the forum which you can see more information about all of these updates. Um, AceWeb was released just today, right before this webinar. And so you can see all of the new features and any kind of fixes that were done right there. So I suppose I need to share my screen again. Are you seeing logging date when staff, are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Thank you. So those were the things added to AceWeb to complement the things that Matthew just shared about student manager. What questions do you have that we can answer for you today? Crickets, crickets. Well, that means we covered everything, right? You're ready to go get this and, and give, it a, give it a try. I did want to tell you what's coming up soon. Jason's going to be, on October 26th, he's going to be sharing some tips and tricks for preparing for opening registration. Some of you open everything. Some of you have a Black Friday type opening where everybody comes and tries to fit into courses with very limited seats. You'll want to jump on this session with Jason and get some tips and tricks and resources for for preparing for opening day. Last chance for any questions before we let you get on with your afternoon. I see no hands, you're unmuted if you just wanna pop out and say something. If not, we're gonna let you go and get, you know, you've got an extra half hour of your day, well, 20 minutes to your day. If you had an hour blocked off and you have a weekend coming up, make it a great one and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye-bye.